Well, hello there, DFS family, and welcome back to the Sunday School NFL DFS podcast powered by Fantasy Six Pack. I am your host, Dave Eddy, and you can find me on Twitter at Corporal Eddy. And of course, I am, as always, blessed with the presence of my blue collar sidekick, Mr. Patrick Mikowski, whom you can find on Twitter at PattyMac33. Now, before we get started, uh, please do us a quick little favor and hit that like button. And if you enjoy this podcast and want to do yourself a favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And lastly, if you want to keep a leg up on all your buddies, go ahead and swing on over to fantasysixpack.net to check out a ton of great content. But let's get on to the big news here. Uh, After my long overdue 30-point win last week in our DFS home league, I am back at the controls and boy, does it feel good. That victory, though, was a nice little preview of an even bigger ass whooping that I'm going to be handing out this week, Patrick. So buckle up, homie, because I'm about to go on a nice little run. The Dave train is coming for you. Choo-choo! Yeah, there's that sexy-ass voice that I've been waiting for. He's back, folks, but not for too long. Yeah, seven weeks probably at the max, Patrick. I I can't imagine it'll go any longer than that. All right, buddy, you ready to get into this week five? Yeah, let's get her done. All right, well, since uh, I'm at the controls here, I'm going to start off uh, with my gospel, my core play of the week, and that's going to be my main shit stain, Deshaun Watson. A very nice $6,900 this week uh, with the Texans versus the Jags. Now, if you remember last week, Watson was my pivot from the higher-owned and more expensive QBs. Now, this week, he actually comes in as the fifth most expensive QB on the slate. Uh, but this is a game I completely expect him to feast in. Uh, Over-under for this game currently is set at 54, which is the second highest on the slate. Now, I actually like this play even more now that Bill O'Brien is out as the head coach because I truly think that Watson is going to absolutely play out of his mind to kind of prove to everyone that it was O'Brien, in fact, that has been holding him back and that he is still the elite quarterback in this game that that we remember. Now, with Watson, you can go ahead and stack him with Fuller or Cooks, but more to come on that later in the show. And then you can always run it back with either Shark or Chenault. Again, more on that later in the show as well. But I expect Watson to be fairly highly owned this week, but it is some chalk that I'm going to eat and I'm going to be overweight on Deshaun Watson. Yeah, I, I'm i into this game just like you are, Dave. I think that uh, it's going to be a doozy. Uh, my gospel, same game, different team. I got running back, James Robinson, 6,700 bones uh, for the RB1 standout rookie. You know, this young man's averaging over 111 total yards a game. He's got three rushing touchdowns on the season. uh, And he's mashed up against the Texans' run defense that has been the worst in the league this season against running backs, yielding almost 190 total yards a game while giving up a touchdown and a half a game. All the signs point to this rookie out of Illinois State having a big game. There were 42 running backs selected in last year's draft. Robinson was not one of them. He'll continue to build his case for Rookie of the Year in this matchup against the Texans. I love me some James Robinson. Yeah, I I can see some James Robinson this week. It's going to be a high-scoring game. I don't necessarily think anyone's going to get drastically too far ahead. So David Johnson and James Robinson are both in for me this week. I don't think I'll have so much Robinson, um, just me personally, but in lineups I don't have Watson. I do plan on on sliding some David Johnson in there. Uh, let's get to our Devils. Our players were fading this week. Patrick, why don't you go ahead and kick that one off? Yeah, so I took a little bit of a different route on this one. Uh, my Devils... Uh this week is any tight end not named Evan Ingram Giants and the Cowboys Ingram's 4600 bucks 
You take a look at the top tight ends in the game. Kittle, Kelsey, Andrews, Waller, Ertz, Hurst, all matched up against defenses that are yielding less than seven fantasy points a game at tight ends. Wait a minute. What, what about TJ Hawkinson? He was a top ten pick, Patrick. Yeah. So Ingram, on the other hand, <laughs> is a really nice matchup against that Cowboys team that's given up almost 12 fantasy points a game this year. I love the price um, in comparison to the top five as well. A one to $2,000 difference. Sit and stay away from any tight end that is not named Evan Ingram this week. Boy, I tell you, I love Evan Ingram this week. I do plan on playing some Daniel Jones. And when I play Daniel Jones, I will be stacking him uh, with Ingram and with Slayton this week because I just see that game going crazy. Um, it's It's been a pretty nice strategy lately to be double stacking with Dak. And I, I think that, I don't know how sneaky it'll be, but I think that double stacking Slayton and Ingram with Jones in that matchup is going to be nice. But I got to tell you, I love Kittle and I love Kelsey this week. I'm going to have probably man i don't know i'm gonna be i'm gonna be pretty decently owned on on kittle and kelsey this week i don't there's not anyone outside of watson that i love enough that i'm gonna you know have a nice discrepancy in any particular um position as far as ownership is concerned so i'm, I'm definitely sliding a lot of kelsey a lot of kittle in there and a little bit of kelsey when i'm playing Mahomes. Now, and that two thousand dollar difference, though, I'm gonna I'm gonna be digging elsewhere. But I, I I mean, you can do it this week with the you know with the prices of some guys, so I can see it. I mean, Kittle is the only offensive option in that passing game in San Francisco. He is going to he is going to eat big time. He is pricey, and I don't like paying for tight ends. But I think this is an example of a spot where I, I can. But <laughs> I, I love I, heard, David. I, I love what I heard. <laughs> ah, I, I love I love Ingram though, man. Um, for me, my devil this week is um, kind of a surprise, I think. I, I we'll, we'll see what ends up shaking out here. But for me, it's Kareem Hunt. $6,500, uh, Browns versus Colts. I mean, first things first, Hunt is not fully healthy, which is, you know, the major concern just in itself. Second of all, when Chubb did go down last week, Hunt's snap count went down as well. Go, go figure that one out. Uh, Hunt only played 35% of snaps last week. Dearness Johnson, he played 23%. Dontrell Hilliard, who? I don't know, but he played 20% of the snaps. If, 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 if Hunt is healthy and was playing the bell call role, then yeah, I, I think he would be a, a no-brainer even against a pretty damn good Colts defense. But I think that Hunt is going to be drastically too highly owned this week. And uh, none of those shares are coming from me, Patrick. All right, so let's yeah. get to our Archangel, our pivot of the week. Um, it looks like we're uh, both playing the same game here, just like we did for our core plays. Um, I am taking Brandon Cooks. 4,100. That's right. 4,100 is all he is this week. Um, Texans versus Jags. Yeah, he should be lower than that. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. After that big old goose egg that Cooks put up last week when a lot of people, myself included, had quite a bit invested yep. in him, I think he is almost certain to be a fairly low-owned play this week. Now, Brandon Cooks always has kind of been up and down in his career, and he could have a, a blow-up game or he could drop another big old FU on us. Um, but I think that he – well, I don't think. He is in another prime spot this week. Everyone is going to be riding that Fuller train. And don't get me wrong, I'm going to have a little bit of Fuller with my Watson um, shares as well, but I'm definitely going to be overweight on Cooks. He is an absolutely fantastic stack this week at a great price in a game that is going to be a shootout. Yeah, I you know, for for Cooks, you know, like you said, he burned quite a few people, I think, last week again. Everybody except for the secondary that he was going up against. <laughs> right. Nice. Um, but <laughs> you know for for me, like you said, I'm staying in that game. Uh, my archangel, my play this week, uh, is LaVisca Chenault Jr., 4500 bucks. Uh, this kid kind of slips under the radar a little bit, I think, in Jacksonville, behind the likes of, you know, Shark, like you were talking, and Cole and Robinson, as I mentioned. 
Um, you know, but he's averaging about five targets a game. He's catching four of those targets, almost 50 yards a game. We've said it 10 times already in this in this broadcast that, you know, we like this Jags-Texans game. We think it's going to be a high-scoring game. And, you know, I love the Deshaun play. I think he gets back on track for a really nice game. Uh, and that means Jacksonville plays from behind. Uh, from what I've seen in some highlights, he's a solid route runner. He's got some speed. He's got that big playability. Um, and I think he's going to get some looks from the stash. So I got LaVisca, man. 4500 bucks. Yeah, I can't argue with that. I, I, I do like Cooks better. Uh, Cooks is cheaper, but I'm going to definitely have, uh, you know, some of him running back on those Watson stacks for sure. I mean, it's it's going to be, you know, Shark and, Shark and him, and they're probably going to be pretty evenly um, exposed for me. Now, this is going to be a good one because I think I've got a really interesting um, contrarian pick this week, but, but yours is... Yours is a, a good one as well. So um, why don't you go ahead and, and start off with, with your Spartan. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to call him out like that. Le'Veon Bell, 5100 bucks, cards at the Jets. He cannot be trusted. And that is exactly why I think he's going to be a sneaky little pick this week. The cards are giving up 111 rushing yards a game. 62 yards a game receiving and 24 and a half fantasy points a game to opposing running backs over the course of this season. The Cardinals secondary is much improved since last year as they're ranked in about the top 10 in every passing category. However, they struggle against pass catching RBs. Arizona is going to put up some points. Joey Flax is going to need a security blanket. Bell should see a minimum 20 touches in this game if he's healthy enough to suit up. I'm going to be sprinkling in a little bit of Le'Veon Bell. I, I would almost bet you anything Le'Veon Bell does not get 20 touches in that game. <laughs> <laughs> I would bet you almost anything. Um, 12, tw- 10 to 12? Yeah, I guess. But it's hard, man. Contrarian picks are so hard. I mean, we could give each other shit all day about those contrarian picks almost every week because that's the whole purpose of it is no one is doing it's the most fun one it's the most fun one because you just get to go so off the wall that you know when it hits it's it's cool it's fun it makes more fun i gotta tell you this to date is my favorite contrarian pick are you ready give it to me have you seen the notes you know what i'm gonna say I have not uh, because I'm driving down the road. So all right, my my contrarian play of the week is none other than Joseph Theodore Burrows, six K, Bengals versus the Ravens. Crazy, right? A rookie quarterback, yeah. rookie, rookie quarterback, TV. yeah, against the Ravens defense. I gotta tell you, man, pretty simple. Bye, David. Pretty simple, man. Volume, okay. Like, hairstyles in the 80s, volume is key to the DFS for me, my friend. I expect the Ravens to get out to a pretty early lead in this game. And that means Burrow is going to be looked upon to kind of throw him right back into it. Got the likes of Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins. And if that 80 reference makes you feel a little bit nostalgic, you can even put A.J. Green in with a stack there to throw the ball to. I expect a pretty good day from Burrow as far as fantasy points are concerned. Like I said, my boy Joey Theodore Burrow already has a game this year where he threw the ball 61 freaking times, Patrick. <laughs> he already had a game where he threw the ball 61 times. I think he's going to have... He was ha- pretty accurate with that game, too. Yeah. He didn't turn it over from That's, what I remember. I think he's going to have to air it out again this week. I think he is not a lock, but he is pretty damn good for at least 50 attempts this week. So even against a fantastic defense, give me the points that those 50 attempts are going to get with a very, very low-owned quarterback. Yeah, man, the Ravens are going to put up some points. So you're you're spot on with that. I I like it. Uh, you know, your love for quarterbacks, though, is a little strange at times, but I guess it works for you, so do your thing. Only, only second to a nice <laughs> tight end. <laughs> that's it yeah all right that's for sure 
All right, here we go. This one's gonna this one's gonna kill me. This is gonna happen eventually. All right, this is a yep. much this is a much different hail mary from me than usual. Usually, a hail mary is is kind of a, a trash guy like you're gonna hopefully be able to pronounce. Um, yeah, <laughs> but my hail mary of the week is going to be Kenyon Drake. He's all the way down to fifty seven hundred dollars um, as the Cardinals take on the Jets. Now, Dave, is he really a Hail Mary, though, at this point? Patrick, listen to me, man. He scored He's one touchdown this year. He's got five targets. Not five catches. Five targets. He has been trash all year long. He's $5,700. He's like the 22nd most expensive running back on a regular slate. Listen. Myself, like many people, are pretty pissed off at, at how poor Drake has started off this season DFS-wise. Yeah. He has had yeah. fantastic matchups. He hasn't gone up against the Colts in New England, you know, in Pittsburgh. He's gone up against, you know, the likes of the Lions. <laughs> the, the lack of targets specifically is troubling. I mean, this is a guy who, you know, if he was averaging five catches a game, you wouldn't bat an eye. But he's had five targets all year long. Listen, if I can get Drake not only super cheap in a very good matchup and at a time when I think he's going to be pretty low owned, that is a leverage play, my friend, that I am going to be overweight on this week because, honestly, I think he has the upside still, even with you know the, the, the bad cold run he goes on, that he could still be the highest scorer on the slate in week five. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're right, man. He's been a huge, huge disappointment. And, you know, I've heard, I've heard some other, you know, kind of chitter chatter, chatter about, you know, maybe Chase Edmonds yeah. is, is going to get, uh, get some run. I yeah. mean, and, and that could be a nice little pivot too. If people decide to kind of, I guess, throw that Hail Mary with, uh, with Drake again, like you're gonna, you know, you might get a little bit of play out of some Edmonds too. So. Yeah, I'll give that one to you, I guess, uh, because you really got to say some prayers if you're going to put that freaking guy in your lineup. So, Hey, man, my, my rule for DFS in any sport is, I mean, the basic, the most simple number one golden rule for me is to play good players. Now, on occasion, I will get a little funky with a Jeff Driscoll, uh, you know, at quarterback. <laughs> but, I mean, Kenyon Drake is a... Kenyon Drake is a Hail Mary, is a fantastic player. He's just it, he's just been terrible. Joe Burrow is a fantastic player, just has a terrible matchup. Um, I, I mean, I, I really do stand by play good players, which is why I do not like your Hail Mary this week, but that's okay because it's not crazy. It is very logical, um, but go ahead with it. All right, so I know I'm going to butcher it, but I'm going to do my absolute best with this one. Olamide Zacchaeus. You got the last name right for sure. I don't know about the first name, but the last yeah, name is for sure find correct. I couldn't a pronunciation, and I couldn't find a pronunciation. I'm pretty so sure I'm it's gonna Zacchaeus. Him, <laughs> I'm going to call him Oz for short, just so go. I don't got to do that again. Uh, $3,000. Panthers at the Dirty Birds. You know, Oz is fourth in line when it comes to that depth Jeff, Jeff, See, I can't even talk now. He's he's fifth the... <laughs> fifth in line. He's he is fifth in line, Patrick. Is he fifth in line? Okay. He is behind Julio. Right he is the... behind Ridley. He is behind Hurst, and he is behind Russell Cage. Oh well, fourth as far as wide receivers go. There you but go. Yeah, fifth <laughs> if, you, if you include Hurst. So, uh, the last two weeks though, he's had 15 targets compared to Gage's six. If Jones or Ridley once again are limited or even out um, in any shape or form, that bodes well for Oz. Uh, he's been getting more looks from Matty Ice. Although Carolina ranks, you know, in the top five versus the pass in the NFL, got a feeling Atlanta's going to be playing from behind quite a bit in this one. That means a lot of Matt Ryan. Um, at the minimum $3,000 price tag, Oz is worth a flyer for me if you're in a pinch. Um, I might just do a lineup or two just to fiddle dink around with it and see what happens. I mean, you could do worse. Um, 
you know, it is possible that, that Julio does not play. If he does play, he's going to be extremely hampered. Um, I mean, to be fair, Hayden Hurst has not nearly filled, you know, that tight end role the same way that, that Hooper did. Um, Russ, yeah, and, and Carolina's defense has only given up four and a half points a game <laughs> to opposing tight ends this year. So Hurst is not going to be a viable option this year. This I mean, Russell Gage, even though he's, you know, ahead of him on the depth chart, he is certainly not a sure thing. Um, he is, you know, 100% behind Calvin Ridley. Um, yeah. So, you know, you could argue he could this week be, you know, the third the third target in that offense. And, and you know, for 3000 bucks, the third option, could, yeah. I mean. It's, that... not, it's not insane. He's not in my player pool this week, but um, for someone who wants to sprinkle him in, I, I can – I, yeah, you could do a hell of a lot worse. And minimum price means you can you can really pay up somewhere. Um, and if you you know put him in there, stack him with Ryan, punt tight end, you could have a nice little Ryan stack and bring it back with you know Mike Davis or bring it back with uh, Robbie Anderson, oh, and you could play yeah, a couple Bobby stud running backs. Anderson. Yeah, play a couple yeah. stud running backs, man. Um, hell, you could get yeah, a little some... goofy pay up for New England defense against yeah. the Denver no name Broncos. Yeah, there's there's some nice stacks, I think, some abilities, some capabilities in that Atlanta Carolina game. DJ Moore, I think, is another good option. Um, and I, you know, you talk about defense. I like Pittsburgh against Philadelphia a lot sure, this weekend. Sure. Um, and they're a lot so, cheaper yeah, than New England. Right, right. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, if you went Ryan, uh, Oz, and Ridley, and ran it back with Robbie Anderson. Um, you know, then you know you punt it down at, at tight end. I mean, you, you know, you don't have to play Ingram. You could you could punt way down. Um, hell, you could punt down to like Herndon if you really wanted to. Um, and you could you could throw just about any two running backs you want. And there's Zeke and you know Zeke and you you pick your poison. So yeah, it's not crazy. Um, not crazy at all. All right, my man. I know that your time is limited, so I think we'll go ahead and call this bad boy quits. But um. You know, I am definitely calling my shot here this week, saying that it is going to be a severe pounding uh, you're going to receive this week, and I apologize in advance. Um, it's not so much that I'm sorry that it's going to happen. It's just I'm sorry that you're going to be on the receiving end of it because you're such a nice guy, and you're so damn handsome. But I got to drop the hammer, my friend. I'm sorry. That's all right. The funny thing is, is even though I didn't have the keys to your car this week, I'm in mine, so... Uh, next weekend, uh, I expect to be stealing yours back. So yeah. good luck to you. Not happening, my friend. We will uh, see everybody next week. Later. <laughs>